Horizon Hobby sent us the new Twin Timber, aka Twinber for short. You asked for a model with almost unbreakable gear and Horizon listened. This thing is a tank. Setup is super simple, anyone will be able to do it easily. The wing tube fits into the fuselage with a clip to hold it in place and you just slide it out and assemble it quickly. All wing plugs are color coded for ease of install. This is the simplest timber to set up so far with very little adjusting necessary to get it up in the air. It uses the classic timber wing plate and screws and you can even paint it to add some extra character to the model. Check it out YouTube, we've got the brand new Timber Twin, or you wanna call it the Twinber. Super awesome plane, triple props on both motors. It's got a really good plug-in ESC system. By this point, you guys have already seen all of the B-roll stuff of me talking about it, how to put it together, uh, how simple it is, how robust the gear are. I mean, these things are like built like a tank. Look at the size of those springs and how easy they bend. I mean, this thing, if you saw the, the intro to this vid, you've already seen me drop it six feet in the air, reverse thrust, and it just splayed all the way out like that. And the plane popped right back up like it never even happened. I'm gonna be really shocked if anybody manages to destroy these wheels. I know somebody's gonna do it, but I'm gonna be shocked if somebody manages to pull it off. Overall, look at the, the hinge quality, super good hinges, actually plastic hinges all the way across. The, uh, you got CA hinges on the rudder and on the elevator. You got the Timber X stabilizer for tons of pitch authority, huge rudder. Oh, I mean, we got this thing set up for full span ailerons for a lot of the B-roll stuff that you've already seen. And now we're flying it with crow and for a first for us, we're flying it with slats, which are definitely interesting. We're gonna fly two batteries, two 3200 packs. We're gonna pull these slats off after the second flight or after the first flight rather to show you the differences in real time between them and see what you wanna prefer to fly with. We are flying with this battery pack, a 3200 Spectrum 50C pack, shoved as far back as possible. I want you guys to know that you don't have to emulate our center of gravity setup. I like things to be neutral and tail heavy a little bit. Other people prefer nose heavy. Whatever works best for you, I want you guys to go out there and fly and find what you prefer to do. Same with Expo and Throw. I like full throws. The thing's set up for 150% rates and maximum possible deflections. But you know, you gotta find what works for you. Not what I work, what works for me doesn't always work for everybody else. I've had guys fly my planes and they're like, man, how do you fly this thing? It's super twitchy. And I've had other people fly it and they're like, wow, how do you fly this thing? It's not twitchy at all. It's super sluggish. So figure out what works for you. For now, we're gonna go ahead and pop right to the action, show you guys what this thing's capable of in real time. Ground handling so far is super good. If you guys are used to timbers, you're already used to this. For those of you guys who are like, oh my God, no, not another timber. Well, guess what? Deal with it. Timbers are awesome. I freaking love them. If I could get a timber with four engines, eight engines, I don't care. I want every timber known to man. I want a timber with a jet engine on it. I don't care. All right, half flaps, bringing her up. Look at how easily that rotates into the sky. We're gonna go full throttle. back snap flap to flip it over. You can fly this thing super slow if you want. You can fly at high speed. It's not very fast. So, you know, that is something to be aware of. I think it topped out at like 60 miles an hour. And I did catch myself forgetting to put the screen recorder on so you guys could see what's going on. So we're gonna drop it into the grass real quick. And then I'm gonna enable the screen recorder, which I need to enable. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, any second now. Now we're going back up, taking off from the grass. Three, two, one. Now you can also make the flaps pop up like this to fly pretty much in a stable Harrier. It's pretty cool, isn't it? This works on the Timber X too, and you don't really need many, like any special programming or anything. You just make the flaps point up because they, they're set to be zero by default. So you can just fly it like this as happy as you want and just kind of use the rudder to steer. On a windier day, don't do it. It was windier earlier, and I'd say, yeah, definitely don't try it. But you get some nice Harriers with this thing. Very, very, very slow. You can sell, it's barely moving. It's like eight miles an hour right now. Let's go full speed, get see what the speed is. Speed is 57 miles an hour. This is no speed demon. Reverse pop top, but it's fun to fly. And you know what, because uh, if you want to fly it, you know, normal, say you want to do touch and goes and you don't want to go through the effort of setting up a crow or a full span aileron setup, you can land it like this. No worries at all, super easy. Just bring it in with uh, you know, a little bit of thrust or no thrust at all. Drop it and flip it over, <laughs> over in the, <laughs> upside down apparently because it got caught on a piece of grass. But 
you can see the plane is robust. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna take it right back up in, in like pretty much instantly. That's what it hit, that little piece of dirt right here. There's like uh, mud. This whole area is part of a creek. And unfortunately, uh, when it rains, it pours. So this whole area gets completely soaked. So of all the places I could have landed, like there's no dirt anywhere else, it's right there. It's like an ant pile. But look at it, it's already ready to go again. No damage at all, just a little bit of dirt on it. So let's get her back up. So you can see it's durable. I mean, the plane looks brand new, aside from that one little uh, issue. I like it, man. This is a lot of fun. It's definitely different than the normal turbo timber. So don't go expecting to, you know, do a lot of the stuff you can do with the turbo. But because it's got the Timber X style wing, you can do these Harriers real easy with the, the mix of flaps to elevator. So you just set the mix up so that when you pull the stick, the elevator pulls the flaps up, which gets the wing out of the way a little bit and keeps it from wing rocking as much. Really easy to do. And you can also set it up for crow. So we're in crow right now. You'll see the uh, ailerons popped up with the flaps popped down. It drops like a rock. Look at how easy this thing takes impacts. Right back up in the air. Let's do full flaps, stall takeoff. Whee! Little bit on the unstable side. I am flying it kind of possibly maybe a little tail heavy, but that's how I prefer to fly. So you don't have to fly like me. You can fly however you prefer to fly, but this is how I prefer to fly because I prefer the pitch responsiveness that I get from being able to do maneuvers like that, which are a little bit more difficult to do when the, no the plane is fighting you. When it's nose heavy, the plane fights everything you tell it to do. It is always trying to be stable. When it's neutral, it does anything that you tell it to do. And when it's tail heavy, it kind of has a mind of its own, but it can still be flown if you put the effort in to do it. So put it into crow again. You can fly this thing in front of my house and I live in like an 80 foot cul-de-sac. No problem, a little bit of thrust and you can bring it in nice and gentle. And then you can bring it in with full span flaps to really lift it off in short order, three, two, one. One of the reasons why I like this plane, especially for people who are newer to flying is because you're not gonna destroy the props every time you flip it over. You saw me flip it over, the plane is still flying. No issues with that at all, right? Um, that's something that's really awesome about this. Like the gear are not gonna break unless you really take like a sledgehammer to it. Um, unless you really like try to drop it. I mean, I did some reverse thrust landing so that it, and it's still fine. Like, let's go ahead and do that real quick and show you guys what I'm talking about. We we'll drop the flaps, no crow this time. We're gonna come in about three feet off the air, off the ground rather. We're gonna just drop it in. I slammed it in. I could have done it even more with the plane just dropping dead. Let's go ahead and pull it up and try it again. Let's do a quick uh, rudder it around. No flaps this time. About three feet. See what I mean? This plane is robust. You are not gonna break this plane unless you intentionally go out to do it or you land it like the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. Like you've really gotta work hard to kill this plane. So this is a great beginner twin. I wouldn't say totally beginner. You gotta have some flight experience, but it's basically built for success. And because it's got such docile flight characteristics, it actually makes it a little bit more fun to flip around because I'm doing stuff with it that I shouldn't be doing with a plane, but I'm over here doing it because it's fun. Hands off the sticks and we're still slightly nose heavy. So actually it's just, you know, it's almost set up perfect right now. Let's go up and sticks to the top left. Get all these cool maneuvers you can do with these planes, man. Like when you got them set up for performance, this is freaking awesome. I love doing these reverse pop tops to bring it right back. Let's say we want to go real slow with it, right? Drop the flaps. We'll just bring it in at a crawl, okay? Like I'm gonna walk out to the plane. I'll just, I'm, I trust it, it's not gonna hit me. So we're gonna walk right out to it. I could probably grab it if I didn't wanna cut my hand up or if I did wanna cut my hand up, but I'm not gonna do that. Look how slow it comes in. With a little bit of wind and a little bit of holding the nose up, those slats actually do help keep the nose from stall, or not the nose, but the plane from stalling as easily. Uh, so it's kinda con you know, worth considering putting them on if you wanna do slow flight all the time. If you want to do what I want to do, which is tumble and go, you know, full roll rate and stuff, maybe don't put them on. Uh, they do adversely affect the roll rate, but it's not that bad where I'd consider taking them out. Let's put it into crow and just kind of drop it right in front of my feet. Well, not right in front of my feet, but pretty close. Another stall takeoff. 
You can hover it, although it's not what I would tell you that is... I don't know if I like this, but it works. You can hover it. We'll do a little bit more hovering with it, maybe on a 2200 pack. I think if it can fly this 3200, we're going to push the 2200 closer and have no problem with it at all. I'm almost hands off, invert it too. Stupidly cool plane. What's our power level? 14.6 volts. So we are actually about where we need to be. I think I'm gonna leave the slats on, man. Uh, I don't see the real reason to take them off anytime soon. So let's go ahead and uh, drop it in. I did say I'd take them off though. So you know what, maybe I will. Uh, let's just go ahead and just pop them off real quick. They're secured with CA glue. Bring it in with Crow. I'll show you guys how to set all this up. It's real easy. All right, bring it on over. We're just gonna pop the slats right off on camera. So all you gotta do is pull gently and they should come right out. There we go. One, two, three, and where's the last one? Four, and they pop right out. They do kind of pull the paint off with them. Uh, if Kieran walks over, you'll be able to see it on the, on the snoot of the, or not the snoot, the leading edge of the wing. Got to be gently pull. There we go. We don't want to damage the slat. So you're going to grab from the, the little... Oh, I did damage the slat. I kind of broke it. That's okay. I'll fix it with glue. It'll be like it never happened. There we go. Now we're going to fly with the slats off on this next battery pack so you guys can get an idea of how they perform. All right. So I tried to get the uh, smart screen recorder working, but it just wasn't playing around. So we got some of it at least, so you guys can see the telemetry in the beginning. You don't really need to see the same thing over and over. Slats are off. Let's take it back up and see what it can do with the slats off in comparison. There we go. It took me a little bit to get it to turn. It, it definitely got caught by some wind and wanted to fly toward Kieran, my cameraman today. It's much more pitch agile and much more uh, roll agile. And it does snap rolls a little bit better. So if you want a more aerobatic plane, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, go with no slats. If you wanna do a lot of slow flight performance, you're gonna notice slats are probably a good choice for you. Um, I'm gonna do most of my flying without slats, I think. I mean, the slow flight performance isn't really affected all that much in my opinion, but it's all about personal preference. I feel like it feels a little bit more planted in the sky with the, the slats removed. Let's put it into full span flaps and just launch it. There we go. I love doing the snap rolls with them off. Let's see if we can do some uh, some cool tumbles and launch of ox with it. Three, two, one. Look at the way it flips over itself. This thing is really well built, guys. If you're looking for a new timber and you want something that's got the power of a twin, this is what you want to do it with. And you can bring it right into a Harrier. And the Harriers are actually better with the slats removed. It actually goes a little slower, it seems. And it doesn't want to kind of pull itself up too much. Like, I feel like the slats are biting into the air a little too much. I like it without the slats, and that's just me personally. You guys are gonna have your own opinions, and I, I encourage you to try it out for yourself. They're not hard to put on and they're not hard to remove. Blue electrical tape from 3M can go right over those holes that, that the slats fit into, and you'll have no issues with it, uh, just covering it up. It'll look really good. Actually, in fact, uh, it's almost a perfect color match for the paint on the plane, so if you get some nicks and scratches, you can just cover it up with blue electrical tape and you'll have no problems. Volts. Uh, step back here, we're gonna just go straight down the taxiway. Look at this thing in Harrier. Very stable. There's some wind picking up, so it's getting affected by that. Man, this is a real winner. I'm actually very happy that Horizon chose to work with us on the new release of this plane. I've always been a big timber fan. It's one of the first planes I started with. If you guys are watching the channel, you no doubt seeing the history of me and Two Brothers RC with Timbers. Tony and I both kind of got our start in you know, model aviation again with the Turbo Timber blue version. So it's very cool to be able to fly the newest blue version of it. Uh, even though the first Turbo Timber I flew only lasted eight seconds because I worked it real bad, putting a GoPro on it and screwing up the center of gravity. Bring it into Crow. Look at how much it slows down in the air. Super cool. Now we're gonna go up after this takeoff. I'm intentionally landing poorly, by the way, like to show you how good the the, uh, the landing gear are. I'm gonna go vertical with it on this takeoff. I'm gonna go ahead and get it up real quick. 
And what we're gonna do going vertical with it is we're going to do the forward slip full flaps test and show you guys how it handles that. So we're gonna drop full flaps, bring it around, unpowered, bringing it in, full right rudder right now. It shows you you can fly it in confined spaces if you want to. No problems at all. Now let's do it with Crow and show you guys what it's capable of with that setup. So three, two, one. We're gonna enable Crow. Crow is enabled. You're gonna see it, it's gonna be like a rock. It's gonna just drop from the sky, but it's not gonna gain any real airspeed. Okay, you can see it right now. Coming in, ooh, we have some uh, tailwind too. Okay, there we go. look at how much it slows down with Crow. See those wheels bottom out? If you break this plane, I'm telling you, I think it's gonna be complete user error on your part. Like just, if you land poorly, the plane is not gonna take damage from it. It is insanely well engineered. Definitely a good plane to learn how to practice your bush lane, bush plane landings with. If you can land this, you can land damn near anything, I think. Uh, let's go up and turn it around and do the crow test again with a full forward slip. Crow is enabled, we're gonna go straight up. I'm gonna flip it over, holding full right rudder. Coming straight in, look at it go. Very, very impressive how that thing slows down. All right, so let's do some hovering testing real quick and then we'll wrap it up and then, uh, you know, give you guys our final thoughts on it. But I'm telling you right now, this plane is a solid winner. I love this thing. It is so well built and engineered. For the price, you cannot go wrong. Although I am noticing that the tail wheel keeps trying to come off. So you might wanna put a little bit of CA glue on it if you're uh, gonna be doing some rough roading with it. We're gonna fly this on a 2200 pack. This is shoved as far forward as it can possibly go. That's because this plane is tail heavy by default. Okay, so you need to counter that somehow. You will never see us on this channel normally doing this. Here's our center of gravity on the plane, right here. So about where we would normally balance a timber, we're gonna take it up real quick, test the hovering with it now that it's a much lighter battery pack and see how it performs now. So let's go ahead and give it a quick shot. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it feels pretty light and nimble so far. Put it up into a hover real fast. I don't wanna do it too low because I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna react. Interesting. You know what, we can bring this lower. I'm gonna bring it lower. We're gonna come back over here. I'm gonna stand over here to make it a little easier on myself. It did kind of like laterally slide through the air. We're gonna use snap flaps, which is a flap mix to elevator. It does hover. Interesting. So if you wanna do hovering, I'm gonna tell you right now, 2200 Spectrum four cell path, what we're flying on right now, is a pretty good choice. It would be even easier to do this with full span ailerons, but because there's no prop wa or uh, you know counter rotating props, or let me rephrase, there's no P factor to speak of here. Uh, you don't really have to worry about it. You can just kind of hover it. It's not the most impressive thing in the world. It's not gonna be able to spin, but it's still fun and it works. Let's try some other stuff like crankshafts with it. Go up nice and high. Three, two, one. So it does do crankshafts, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's try the flat spins with it so you guys can see some more of its aerobatic potential. No doubt you've already seen some of this, but I wanna show you in the in the full, you know, real time. We go back, full elevator, full left rudder. Do not use counter aileron, just let it do its own thing. It is still flying like it's nose heavy. So I'm tempted, you, what do you think, Kieran? Should I bring that battery further back? Absolutely. All right, we're gonna land it real quick, no crow or nothing. It might actually be even easier to hover like this. It does fly really good on the lighter weight pack. Let me tell you guys right now, uh, Kiron's an aerodynamicist and I think he's gonna agree with me when I say the lighter the battery you can put into a plane and get away with it, the better off you're gonna be in terms of flying. Uh, That's certainly true. Unless you're in wind. If you're in wind, you're gonna wanna have a heavier wing to cut through the turbulence. If you're not in wind, you're gonna wanna fly as light as possible so you can get the most aerobatic potential out of the plane. The heavier the airframe, the heavier the wing loading, therefore the easier it stalls when it reaches uh, at any airspeed, really. So 
And this will contribute to it feeling sluggish too. So now we're balancing slightly behind where we were. We're gonna just take it off in the grass again because why not show what it can do on all surfaces? Oh yeah, hovering's a lot easier now when it's pushed further back. Let's put it in the Harrier. Even more stable. Look at it go. So you can hover it. Not very impressive hovering. I don't think it was ever designed to do that. So, you know, that's not really a point against it. It's a twin. Most twins don't do very impressive hovering, except for the EC-1500, which is still to date one of my favorite planes ever released. And I wish Horizon would bring it back. I want to fly it. I want a new one. Look at how stable this is. Rock solid stable. I'm going to just fly it right over my head. I actually felt the prop wash off that. That was super cool. Did you get that, man? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it really wasn't that close to my head, but you know, I could have hurt myself if I had hit myself with one of the wheels or something, I guess. Yes, you can Harrier land this plane, and yes, it actually handles it really well. Except it flips over sometimes in the grass. But the fact that the wheels splay out and it handles it just fine should tell you a lot about how well this plane is constructed. The springs are still fine, as you can see. No issues at all. We're gonna just take right off again. We had so much rain recently that every time this plane flips over, it just gets covered in more and more dirt. <laughs> Let's try to put it up into a blender while we're still here. Probably won't be that impressive, but we're about to find out. Not bad, actually. I'm surprised at how good that is. Woo! Those upward reflexed flaps really make a big difference in how this plane performs. It tends to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It kind of, it feels like it introduces washout to the, or reduces the wing's incidence at the root is what it's doing. And that allows it to kind of get out of the way and it doesn't wing rock really much, if at all. And if it does wing rock, it's very light and gentle, very easy to correct and fix. And it just lets you do some of this post, not post stall, but at least it reduces Actually, would you say it increases the critical angle of attack a bit, Kieran? Uh, no. You don't think so? I mean, what is it doing now, though? You think it's flying just on thrust? Yes. Okay, so we are post stall then, you think? Absolutely. Okay, so we're post stall maneuvering. Ace Combat fans rejoice. We're out here doing uh, the Celepatura Stadium flip. Not really, but still cool. All right, let's see if we can Harrier land it now. Woo! Sometimes you screw things up. Sometimes a wind gust screws things up. Sometimes you fat finger. That was all of the above. Mostly user operator error on that one. No problem at all though. Thrust reversed. All right, let me give you my final thoughts on this thing. This right now, as far as timbers go, this is the best damn timber I think I've flown in a while. I think I like the Evo better but I do like the ease of use. I do like the fact that you can swap between full span ailerons and crow at almost at a whim. It's very easy to do. Uh, I prefer crow on this model. Uh, full span doesn't really do as much as I want. The motors are not powerful enough to do rolling harriers reliably. I do really like the overall trim scheme. I've always liked blue. It's one of my favorite colors. That or orange would be great on the timber too. Blue and orange, ooh boy. Um, Overall control authority is great. I mean, look at this throw I'm getting. This is very, like, you know, I put it on the inner holes for the elevator and the rudder, uh, but the ailerons are basically, this is just 150% rates. That's what it looks like. Um, the plane is well built. You've seen that it can take so many hits. If you want to learn how to fly, and this is like, this would make a great second plane for you, for sure. Uh, two bros score for this, absolutely nine and a half out of 10. Where could it be improved? I honestly think it could use much more powerful motors. Twice as powerful as this would allow it to be a much more impressive 3D machine. It's still not bad. Uh, for what it's doing, I'm impressed with it. I think you guys are gonna love it. The battery tray is amazing that you have this top loader in here. The springs, I cannot, the springs, the springs. I cannot, I, I just can't sing their praises enough. They're just so good. The springs are so freaking good, man. They, they've listened to every complaint about this plane and made it 10 times better than I thought it could ever be. Um, 
Is this gonna replace the Evo? I don't think so. I think they're gonna keep selling that for years to come. I do think that this plane is gonna be a great addition to your timber fleet. I think you should pick it up. Link is in the description. Pre-order it now. It is gonna sell out quick. That's what happened with the uh, UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. Pick one of these bad boys up. It is John approved and I think you guys are gonna love it. See you guys in the B-roll section. Let's move on to the model's characteristics. Ground handling is like a typical timber. If you're not careful at speed, you will absolutely scrape the wings. This is fortunately easily fixed by adding blue 3M electrical tape on the wing skids, which will act as armor to protect the plastic. It can be easily replaced if you wear it out. The landing gear are best in class in terms of durability. Even my drunk cousin from South Carolina could probably land this model without breaking the gear. We've literally bottomed out the gear and it still flexes right back into shape and pops up like it's challenging us to a fight. Totally fine. Just scraped up the belly a little bit. That's how robust this thing is. Look at the, look at the gear, they <laughs> ate so much grass. I'm out the way. <laughs> getting the grass out of it. Look at it, it's like basically <laughs> brand new condition still. You ate the grass and it's still oh, yeah. fine. <laughs> ate the grass and it's still fine. Reverse thrust is useful for more than just landing like an idiot. You can also use it on water where it comes really in handy. The model can back up on water as well as on land and let you reposition it for a sweet takeoff. That Harrier mix that we use, elevator to flap mixing, also works on water really well, and you can Harrier land it no matter what you prefer flying from, whether you prefer water or land. <laughs> Seriously, we can't praise the landing gear upgrade enough. Just look at it. Aside from the outstanding landing gear, one of the specialties of this model really is flying in sustained Harriers using that mix that we developed. This pushes the airframe firmly into 3D territory. Perhaps not crazy 3D, but moderate 3D just like its other siblings in the timber family. You can't go wrong with a timber, and there's so many ways to experiment with them. If you do the opposite of this mix and drop the flaps with elevator instead of pulling them up, it'll flip over itself within a fuselage length. Timbers really can do it all, and it's easy to see why we love them so much, no matter what form they come in. Takeoffs and landings are a breeze too, with the added benefit of having almost no P-factor to deal with. Though, we will mention that it can be a little bit more difficult on water because the water rudder lines don't quite reach the hookups on the rudder, so we flew it without the water rudders. The model comes with differential thrust enabled at 10%, so you may want to increase or turn it off depending on your preferences. It does come in huge help on the water, and we do wish that we'd left it enabled for float flying. It does feel like the model is a bit more pitch sensitive with floats. This is most noticeable when pitching down with full thrust, as the timber will front flip as many times as you tell it to, which is actually really awesome and adds a new trick to its aerobatic potential that most people might not have even considered. With this, however, does come a weird seesaw-like tendency when landing with thrust, We'll recommend that you chop throttle when landing on water and flare it in for a nice slide, which minimizes some of that tendency which seems to come from high wing mounted motors. Those high wing motors also produce a downward thrust line, just enough to keep the model planted on the ground. You don't need forward elevator pressure like you would with a normal tail dragger. If you're tall like I am, it's hard to notice that it's nosing over until it just does and then you end up looking stupid but a little bit of white electrical tape on the snoot fixes it and it's like it never happened. To avoid this, we'd recommend doing three-point landings, which are easy to do with the recommended 4-cell 3200 battery and full throws. But enough of that, let's get into acrobatic performance. Harriers are actually our favorite maneuver with this model, and the servos are great overall, and we didn't see a need to mess with them, but we did unlock the model for 150% rates so that we could get this level of performance. If this kind of flying intrigues you, consider following our setup guide, which we'll be releasing soon. The Twinbur is no slouch. Yeah, it's a bush plane, but it can be thrown around like an aggressive 3D model, and you can have confidence that it'll do what you tell it to do. Maneuvers are even more crisp on floats with the responsive pitch axis from the center of pressure change that comes from adding the floats to it. Overall, the Twinbur is a real winner, and it would make an excellent model to any pilot's fleet. 
Consider picking one of these up from the links in the description, which is a huge help to us and lets us continue to push the limits of what these models are truly capable of. I know I said that we'd release the setup video later, but while editing this, I realized that I could go ahead and fit the setup guide into the vid for an all-in-one experience. So check it out and let us know what you think. One of the major changes Horizon made to the Twinbur was actually really minor. There's a clip in the fuselage that allows you to put the wing tube inside the plane for transportation. This was a must-have feature that we didn't know that we wanted. It really is an awesome quality of life change. You have three options for the Twinbur. You can run it stock, or you can run it with full span ailerons, or you can run it with a crow configuration. All three of these options are great, but we personally prefer the crow setup because it allows you to get more out of the model and fly it in confined spaces. To get it set up for any non-standard config, you'll want to move the lights in channel 5 to the bind port. They'll still get power from the bind port, so don't worry about moving it. You'll want to map out what servo lead goes to which side of the plane, and then tag it so that you'll know that the lead is for the right or left wing. Horizon probably could have done this for us and made it a little bit easier, but it isn't really that hard to do yourself. To set it up for Crow, grab the left aileron lead and plug it into channel 5, and make sure that the wing type is set to two ailerons, one flap, and ensure that the channel assign has the left aileron map the channel 5 before proceeding to mixing. Here's the setup for the snap flap and harrier flap mix. Snap flaps are negative 100% and harrier flaps are 100% using the pre-built elevator to flap mix in a spectrum radio. Harrier flaps are required to make this model perform harriers without wing rocking. It's totally worth doing. Next up is full span flaps and crow, a mix of flap to left aileron. Negative 40% on the right value causes the flaps to droop, which creates full span flaps. Positive 40% causes them to reflex upward, creating crow. Crow is used to slow the model down, acting like functional air brakes at this scale. It's highly effective and can also be used to increase angle of attack without stalling so long as you keep thrust applied. You need a mix of up elevator with full span flaps so the wing's moment doesn't cause it to pitch down severely, and you need a mix of down elevator with crow to prevent the wing's moment from causing it to pitch up strongly. These are both essential mixes, otherwise you will find it impossible to control the plane. If you want more control while in crow or full span flaps, you can create a curved mix of aileron to right aileron, which causes the aileron stick to improve the aileron response when crow or full span flaps are deployed. If you don't do this, you get a very mushy roll response, and we highly recommend making sure it only activates when the crow switch is thrown, Otherwise it will act like a negative expo mix and make roll sensitivity much stronger. If you want full span ailerons, disconnect the right flap from the servo lead and connect it to channel 5 and ensure that you've set the wing type to two flaps, one aileron, and that the channel assign menu has the receiver port assignments, correctly referencing the right flap as channel 5. Full span ailerons are a pretty simple mix. All you need to do is create a mix of aileron to left flap and set it to negative 100% on both sides of the mix. You can set a switch to govern it, or simply leave it on all the time as we usually do. The model will be more maneuverable in roll, but there's not much else you can get from it. Crow is definitely our preferred setup, which is unusual for us, but speaks volumes about how much we enjoy the stall characteristics of this model. We're using the innermost hole on the elevator and rudder with 150% rates, and to get those rates, you need to unlock the receiver and reset it. Search YouTube for Unlock AR637TA, which covers the process. We also lubed up the push rods with Super Lube, which allows them to slide effortlessly within the sleeves and reduce the wear the servos will experience from fighting the push rods. That basically covers everything. If we miss something or you just have questions about setup, feel free to ask and we'll do our best to help. See you guys again next time for a new upload.